In this video, I'm going to show you how to color grade skin tones using the Metro Color inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and you've got your footage on the timeline, the first thing that we need to do is go into our color grading tab. So the first way of doing this is to go into effects, search for Lemetri, that should be near the bottom, drop Lemetri color onto your footage. And then as you can see, you've got the Lemetri tab here. And in order to do this color grading, we need the HSL secondary tab. So you would just go into this and go through the steps that I'm going to show you. But there is another way of going into Lemetri and that is to change the workspace that we're in. So in order to do this, we're just going to go up onto this top bar of Premiere and at the moment we're in editing and then we need to select color. Doing that will load up the Lemetri color tab on the right of Premiere and then inside of here you can see we've got HSL secondary so we'll select that and this is where we're going to do our color correction. So to begin with we first just want to select a color so you can do this one of a few ways you can go into the sliders we can start with a reference color so my skin tone is quite orange in this example so we'll start with this red circle and then we'll move this hue slider over to the left or to the right to try and target the skin tone so basically everything here that is in color will be affected everything that is grayed out will not be affected so go ahead and select the skin tones and then move down to saturation. Again, we'll move the slider to try and target the specific color. So if we pull this over to the left, it's going to get rid of those lights, which is great. And then we've got lightness as well. So I'm just going to pull this over to the left. So basically we're affecting my face, my arms a little bit on the left. And then it looks like the part of the iPad up here is being affected as well. But that's fine. We can work with that for now. Alternatively though, you can just set the color using these eyedropper tools. So select this color and it will target that very specifically. So now that you've selected the color of the skin tone, we can move on to the correction stage. So if we move down to correction, you can see we've got this color wheel to begin with. So if I just move this towards the greens, you can see the face, the skin tone has turned green. I'll zoom in to show you that in a more clear example. So zoom to 150 and as you can see the face has turned green although as you can see it's unfortunately not all the way around the face but that's fine because we can go into the hsl sliders up here and we can just adjust these so that more of the face is affected the problem is though doing that means that more of the room is being affected so this is a juggling act but let's say your selection is perfect we can move down into the correction and we can keep continuing to change the colors so if i boost this towards the the reds the yellows the oranges you can see i'm warming up my skin tone and if i pull this slider up you can see it's increasing or decreasing the luminance as well of course though that is just a bit horrendous so we'll keep that where it was in the middle and then we'll move down to temperature so we can move the temperature towards the warmer colors or we could cool it down a little bit so I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. Then we've got tint, so we can target the tint, pull this towards the greens. We can remove the contrast a little bit. We'll increase the sharpening and we'll increase the saturation a touch. So if I zoom out and we turn this layer off, so we turn the metric off, you can see only the skin tones have been affected, which is really great. Of course, though, this example of color grading is way too extreme. In reality, if I was to do some isolated color grading, I would only lean it towards the oranges just a little bit. So I'll pull all these back into where they should be. So if this is our starting point, I would probably only push my skin tones just a little bit warmer. So this is before and this is after. But honestly, that's the furthest that I would take this isolated color grading on myself because this can get really extreme and it can look really fake and really obvious. So just adding that subtle layer of isolated color grading with your skin tones is a really nice way to make your subject or yourself pop from the background or just add a little bit of warmth to the skin. This video in particular was filmed during the middle of the winter so I was extremely pale so just adding this Lemetri color on with this isolated skin color grading it means I've just got a little bit more of a tan and it just means I stand out from the background just a little bit more. Now, if for some reason your color grading on the HSL secondary spills out onto the background, then you can just make a duplicate layer of your footage, delete the Lumetri color from the bottom layer, and then you can just go ahead and create a mask around the parts of the image that you want affected. So I'll create a mask around the face. And if I turn this light on and off, you can see only the face is targeted. 
Of course, though, if you do have a moving subject, though, that means you are going to have to track them and you are going to have to move that mask to follow them as well, which can get a little bit complicated and time consuming. But there you go. That is how I isolate skin tones in my color grading inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.